Since the grip is approximately the same on the revolver and the auto, I'll go ahead with the stance using the auto. The rear stance is a function of the entire body from the feet to the top of the head. And the first thing that makes it look unusual is that uh, the body is more or less square to the target. Uh, when a flag flies, it's necessary to cover as much ground with your peripheral vision as possible. So that when you're coming into an action, you want to face into it pretty much so that you can look both ways at the same time. There may be other problems. That doesn't mean you square your feet exactly. Most people find that they're a little bit more comfortable by dropping the right foot back slightly. Obviously, this is for a right-hander. But don't drop it back to there. That makes you unstable and makes it difficult for you to ass uh, address targets on your left. You are, in effect, denying your left side. And remember that these techniques are not range techniques. They are street techniques. And you don't know what type of a situation you're getting into. Now, we showed you the grip. Here's the grip. The stance, so note that the feet are planted uh, squarely, about a, a half step apart. The knees are straight, the hips are level, the shoulder is level, the head is erect. Clearly, there are variations upon this, but I'm showing you the system which we suggest first. If you find that anatomical differences make it necessary for you to modify it for your purposes, OK. Now, I'm going to point in that direction because I have a prejudice against uh, uh, pointing at the camera. There is the stance. Note that the arm is extended from the right shoulder. The right arm is as straight as you can get it or slightly bent. We, I personally favor a slightly bent right arm because it's stronger. But there are very good shots who shoot with a straight arm. The, uh, Inventor of the stance, however, Jack Weaver, always shot with a slightly bent arm, and I do. I favor it somewhat. <clears throat> so let's bring it down to about there. But don't let the elbow flex out to the side. That'll involve a problem here of lack of support against the coil. You want to shoot right down your forearm in such a fashion. Keep your head up. Do not bring your head down to your pistol. Bring your pistol up to your head. It's easier on your muscles. You will use both eyes if you can. If you're fortunate enough to have one eye which is distinctly master, leave both eyes open and allow nature to take its course. Here I am shooting with my right eye, and now I'm shooting with my left eye. That's all the difference I have to make. So whether you are right or left eyed is unimportant. Either one will do shooting with the right arm. If, on the other hand, your eyes are not master, that is, they're about the same, and that happens, then it probably is a good idea for you to dim your left eye slightly. I have to do this because I am slightly left-eyed, not very much, but it's easier and it's a better teaching technique for me to shoot right-handed with the right eye. So I slightly dim my left eye. But by choice, you'll use both eyes at once. Now, with your head up and your hand there, what do you do with your left hand? So the left hand is placed on the weapon Vertical, with a palm vertical and a thumb up. It clasps the, the pistol with the, with the uh, two hands clapping together. Do not allow the left hand to come down here. This is called palming it. And of course, if you want to uh, get fancy, you can use one of the uh, cinematographic things where you shoot like this. This is pretty good. Now, the uh, answer is to keep your hands together and to keep the fingers together and the thumb high. Now. The index finger. Uh, many expert shots carry the index finger forward there. And we don't insist that you do not. However, our teachings here have uh, established pretty well that you have better recoil control when your hand is underneath the trigger guard. For the obvious reason, you see, the pistol tends to rotate here. And if you put your hand there, you have more leverage against damping it. The, uh, uh, it's optional, but. We suggest you try this system first. The right thumb is on the safety, so, and the left thumb, by choice, is placed on top of the right thumb. There are those, again, who carry the thumb down here, but you want to watch that. There's a tendency there to get, operate that safety inadvertently. It's, it gets worse if you get one of these <coughs> elaborate extended slide stops. Then if you carry your thumb down there, you'll lock the action open without a tendency. 
<coughs> now, but the essence of the weaver's dance is the isometric push-pull between the right hand and the left. That's what makes it weaver as opposed to any other two-handed stance. You push with the right and you pull with the left. The pressure in here builds you into a tank turret so that the pistol itself represents the gun, the hands, the mantlet, the mounting system, and the shoulders, the turret itself. So in a proper weaver stance, you can, can change your action this way without ever flexing anything in here. It's important in your training to remember that you do not let your wrists and elbows flex. If you do that, every time you take a firing position, you're going to have to find it again. In your hunting or ready position down here with your thumb on the safety and the finger straight, if you want to go on target, note that the angle of my wrist is not going to change. Like that. If you do this, you have to find it again. You have unlocked yourself. Marksmanship is essentially a matter of program reflexes. And if you concentrate heavily on programming your reflexes, you can pick up very good technique in a very short time. If you have to find yourself every time you start again, it'll take you years to learn this. This way we can do it in a week or so. So, remember that your position here remains constant. There's your firing stance, there's your rest stance. Without the only difference is that you pivot it from the shoulders and put your elbow against your side. This is your rest stance, and this is your coverage stance. If you are expecting trouble, you stand this way with your finger straight. Remember, you don't put your finger on the trigger until your sights are on the target, and your safety on. If you take a blow in this position, or something hits you, you won't have an accidental discharge. And you cannot move any faster than that. So you are not slowing yourself down in that situation. The weaver stance is going to do the job for you most of the time. Later on in the course, we'll show you a couple of different systems which might come up in various types of emergencies.